Some of us spend our time playing new releases, or whatever games are in the charts. I, on the other hand, prefer the finer things in life. A great game is like fine wine and gets better with age. But like a fine wine, sometimes these commodities hold significant value. You may not be able to afford thousands of classic games, but I certainly can. <laughs> so I am here to educate you and share with you my experiences with some of the best games of all time. It is most common for people to fall in love and form relationships. Corporate companies are no different and Nintendo ended up in bed with Sony and having a fling with them when they produced the Nintendo SSMP sound chip for the Super Nintendo. The two companies were now in love and Sony was very keen to get married to Nintendo so they could have a baby with them and name it the Super Nintendo PlayStation. The Nintendo PlayStation was to be a CD add-on for the existing Super Nintendo, similar to that of the Mega Drive Mega CD attachment. A standalone version of the console was also developed, and very recently the prototype was discovered laying around in someone's garage. However, before the release of this console, the relationship between Nintendo and Sony began to break down. The two companies conflicted over control of the licensing, under their agreement, Sony would develop and retain control over the SNES CD disc format, with Nintendo thus effectively ceding a large amount of control of software licensing to Sony. So, when you humanise the situation, it is very easy to understand. No man wants to be pressurised by a wife or girlfriend to have a baby when they are not ready. And that is the kind of pressure Sony were beginning to put on Nintendo. So, what did Nintendo do? The same any sane man would do. They began playing the field and dumped their girlfriend and told Sony to go pester another man to have children with. As you all know, there is no wrath like a woman's scorn. And in Sony's case, they went on to develop the standalone PlayStation, which went on to become one of the most successful games consoles of all time, even leading the market today. But, before all this happened, Nintendo needed a plausible excuse to dump Sony. So what did they do? They slept with the fat girl down the road. Philips. Basically, to get rid of Sony, Nintendo announced that they would be releasing a CD add-on with Philips instead of Sony. However, of course, this never happened either. But it did allow Philips to use some of the big Nintendo licenses like Mario and Zelda with their own games on their CDI console. When I said Philips was the fat girl down the road, I really wasn't exaggerating. Just look how fat and ugly this thing is. This is the Philips CDI and it is really heavy and looks like a bloody VCR. In terms of aesthetics, it is the ugliest console I know with the exception of the Xbox One. So here you go, a side by side comparison of these two consoles. Looking at them, they could very easily be inbred brother cousins. The Philips CDI was released in 1991. The device was created to provide more functionality than an audio CD player or games console, but at a lower price than a personal computer with a CD-ROM drive at the time. The system is also Dutch. Isn't that weird? Philips managed to make their device cheaper than a PC by leaving out a hard drive, a floppy disk drive, a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor. You know, just about everything that made a PC useful back in the day. They even made the intelligent decision to give the device less operating system software than a PC. In addition to just games, the system also included educational and multimedia reference titles, such as encyclopedias and museum tours. After all, who wouldn't want to do their homework using Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia and Spellcheck It using the CDI version of the Oxford Dictionary? After that, you could always unwind and watch and listen to the music of Cartoon Jukebox or take a visit to Sesame Street to learn about letters. To be fair to Philips though, its digital video CDs in which it plays looks pretty crisp. Far better than VHS tapes looked at the time anyway. 
I've got a large selection of these old things and would happily watch these as an alternative to a DVD any day of the week. Talk about something that was ahead of its time, I do not think I got a DVD player till around 99, 2000 sort of time. And I was an early adopter. The CDI predates this technology by nine years. So now, let me sit back, relax, and view all the news and views from 1995. On this disc, I can revisit the incidents that happened in Bosnia, Somalia, and Rwanda. And if I get bored of that, I can revisit the headlines of Hugh Grant and OJ Simpson. So, now I've given you some of the history of the CDI and talked about some of the system's other functionalities, it is now time to talk about what you are all here for. The games. Just before I begin, I just want to mention that in today's video, I shall not be covering the Zelda games or Hotel Mario. This is because I think far too many YouTubers talk about those games than they perhaps deserve to be talked about. Because of this, I feel the system can sometimes be unfairly defined by these four games. Also, I refuse to pay a premium for games just because they have the word Zelda or Mario in the title. I buy games to play and experience, and the majority of games on the CDI cost between £1 and £1.50 each. So no way am I going to pay between £30 and £200 for a bad game purely based on the game's title. The only explanation I can think of for these games inflated values is that you get all these weirdo Nintendo shelf collectors. You know the ones, the ones who buy lots of games but not to play them, just to look at them. I've never met a fellow CDI owner in my life, so I fear that my assumptions are probably true. I reckon there's loads of idiots out there who've got these games sitting on their shelves but they don't even own a system to play them on. These are the sort of games idiots will pay out for and not use. You know, games like Beethoven and X-Zone on the Super Nintendo. Games that are really bad but shelf collectors want them anyway. You know, those idiots who go for full sets. The only explanation I can think of is they have mental health problems like OCD. What other reason would there be to collect every single game for a console? Obviously, I can only talk about games I own. And we all know Nintendo had Mario, Sega had Sonic, Microsoft had Halo, etc. Well, Philips for their system had Burn Cycle. This game comes in a strange fluorescent green case and includes a colourful instruction manual and an extra CD with the game's soundtrack on. According to Retro Gamer magazine, they describe this game as a game full of fully digitised action sequences set in a surreal 3D cyberpunk environment, coupled with an intriguing storyline filled with puzzles, shooting sections and character interaction, making this an enduring adventure. Personally, however, I am not a fan of this game. I die every few seconds and have to watch the exact same scenes over and over again. And this so-called cyberpunk world looks ridiculous to me. The game's music and settings remind me of TV shows like Red the Wolf. However, the big difference is that in Red the Wolf, it is a comedy where for some strange reason, this game tries to take itself seriously. I prefer to just watch an episode of The Crystal Maze than sit through this weirdness. I think this game is absolute smeg. The next game I'm going to talk about is called Mega Maze. The game itself looks very primitive, even for its time. However, I found the gameplay in this one very enjoyable and original. The basic goal of Mega Maze is to move the object ball through mazes and deposit it in a finishing pit. You must complete levels within a time frame specific to each level, whilst at the same time avoiding what the manual calls nasty balls. Although difficult to explain, as you move your ball around, you'll notice you also move the nasty balls around simultaneously, meaning it is completely your own fault if you make your balls collide. This game has many fun puzzles in which really require you to rack your brain to complete. If you have watched some of my previous reviews, you will know that I'm a big fan of Marble Madness. This is because I love playing with balls. This is another game in which your balls are fun to play with. Mad Dog McCree is another full motion video game. For some reason the talking scenes in this game remind me of the sort of crap they play on the screens when you are waiting in queues for a ride at the Disney or Universal parks. 
The actors, for some reason to me, do not look like they are playing cowboys. They look more like they are pretending to be theme park workers playing cowboys, if you understand where I'm coming from. This game was originally released in arcades and features a series of stages in which you must shoot enemies before they fire, avoid shooting innocent bystanders and reload each time their 6 round revolver is depleted of bullets. Shooting a bystander or getting hit by a gunfighter results in the loss of one life out of three and is followed by a clip showing the town doctor commenting on the player's actions. I absolutely hate this gentleman. There is nothing worse than some smug twat in a top hat trying to tell you how to live your life. Playing this game, I found myself sometimes accidentally trying to angle my shots by pointing the CDI controller at the screen as if it were a Wiimote. Sadly, when using the controller, I didn't appear to be able to angle most of my shots fast enough to enjoy the game and was dead more times than not before I had time to even line up the target. However, I must admit I did enjoy playing this game enough that I decided I will give this game another play now I have purchased a CDI light gun whilst making this review. The over the top deaths whenever you manage to shoot someone is very satisfying indeed. It is such a pleasurable sensory experience watching real life actors pretending to tumble to their death. Subscribe to this channel to see my future Mad Dog McCree standalone review with a light gun. Speaking of quick draw shooting games, Escape from Cyber City is another game similar to Mad Dog. This one is animated and set in a strange world called Cyber City. This one however is absolutely awful as it gives you such small windows to shoot the enemies it renders the game practically impossible. Terrible game! The Philips CDI also has its own version of Tetris. The main thing which makes this version stand apart from the others is the full motion videos of nature playing in the background. This element of the game is nice, but the game has many elements in which would make you want to stick with the Game Boy version. The music in the game, in which you can hear playing now, is relaxing and mellow, but really doesn't go with the methodical gameplay style of Tetris. Also as you are playing, the game keeps stopping to tell you you are beginning another level rather than the transition you get in other versions of the game. Moving the blocks can also be a bit annoying, as when you choose to bring the blocks down faster, they come down the screen way too fast, which can often cause you to make silly mistakes. Play it on the Game Boy instead, is my advice. Another game I have recently played is Mutant Rampage Body Slam. I give this game extra credit, as it looks like a traditional game from a 16-bit era. This game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up and this is everything you would expect from the genre. Saves a full motion video animation between deaths and levels. Upon starting to play this, after a minute or two, it had me wishing I was playing Final Fight or Streets of Rage instead. However, after giving the game a little bit more time and learning the best ways to time my hits, I eventually started enjoying myself. It feels like a genuine, enjoyable, novel achievement playing a traditional game on the CDI so I'll give this one a massive thumbs up for trying. I salute you mutant rampage body slam. Okay, that was some Philips CDI games for you. I own many more which I plan to play and experience. And any cool ones I discover, I plan to talk about on this very channel, so stay tuned. The Philips CDI is a largely misunderstood beast and it has been an item of ridicule ever since James Rolfe slagged it off. There are few systems that are so unfairly maligned and misrepresented in terms of quality and historical significance as much as this console. It is a terribly flawed system, but there are positives to take with this one. The video CDs still look great to this day, so if you fancy having a hipster night in, why not watch Beverly Hills Cop on the Philips CDI? Secondly, if you want to experience Weird Foul Games consoles, you normally have to pay a premium for doing so. Games on the 32X, the Virtual Boy and the Mega CD are very expensive for example, but games on the Philips CDI remain around £1 to £1.50 each. Paying prices that low to experience a retro game system is almost unheard of in today's day and age. Playing games on this system really do make you feel like an explorer tracking through uncharted territory and the games haven't been talked about or played to death nowhere near as much as its counterparts on the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Unless you're an idiot who wants to pay out 
for the four expensive Nintendo licensed games, you can go hidden gem digging on this console for an extremely low price. Please stop listening to everyone online about apparently how bad the Philips CDI is. I genuinely believe there is some good Poundland fun to be had out of this system. But I also feel that in today's day and age, many of you will listen to a big YouTuber and simply take it as fact without even checking out the console or game for yourself. Remember, opinions are opinions and not fact. So get your ass off YouTube and go give some of these obscure games and consoles a chance for yourself. Who knows, you might be pleasantly surprised and manage to unearth some cool hidden gems in which you will thoroughly enjoy. Or worst case scenario, you'll find some terrible games in which you find absolutely hilarious. Either way, value wise today, I believe that this console is an absolute winner and you will not be forced to pay silly prices like when you buy games for a Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. If you enjoyed today's video, there are plenty more similar videos available on my channel. So hit the subscribe button and click one of the annotations proceeding this video. Cheerio!